The United States Department of Energy conducted several on-site tests, releasing atomic nuclear bombs like this one to study their effects. Intermountain Healthcare is hoping to spread the word about the deadline for those downwind of the nuclear testing that was conducted at the Nevada test site back in the 1950s and early 60s. One test was done on an atomic bomb before the other two were used in um, Japan. So obviously they were successful. It's the first time we've had any nuclear um, energy. Um, and after the war, they decided to move the ongoing testing of this new technology to Nevada, to the Nevada test site. Those who lived here from 51 to 58 or July of 62 were exposed to close to 100 atmospheric nuclear bomb tests um, directly west of us at the Nevada test site. So anyone that was exposed has a higher uh, incidence and risk for developing certain types of cancers and so it's important that those people not only get cancer screening physicals but also if they develop a cancer get into this program to get compensation to help pay for the care that they will require because of that exposure. Washington County is one of 21 counties in Utah, Nevada, and Arizona that were determined by law as being impacted by the blasts due to the direction of the wind. The southern half of Utah is included, um, the northern half of Arizona is included, and the um, eastern side of Nevada is included in that. Um, as far as Clark County, even though it is closer to the Nevada test site than we are, they're not included because they watched wind currents when they were doing an atmospheric test. Whenever the wind currents went towards Vegas or California, they canceled the test. They only blew the tests when they arced to the less populated areas and so that's why this area is covered but uh, Las Vegas which is closer than we are isn't. Um, the only sliver of Clark County that is included in the law is that Mesquite Bunkerville area that very fine little line right there at the top. The rest of Clark County isn't included in the law. So. The RECA or Radiation Exposure Compensation Act was set up to cover downwinders on-site participants, uranium miners, millers, and ore transporters. The program is administered by the Department of Justice. In order to qualify, a downwinder must have lived in the covered counties for at least two years and have a certain type of cancer. Uh, most of the internal organs are included. Um, one big exception is the kidney is not. Um, it's not included as a covered cancer. Bladder is, but kidney is not. None of the skin cancers are covered. Most all of the um, blood-borne cancers are included, the leukemias, the lymphomas, uh, multiple myeloma. Um, but not every cancer qualifies. 19 different ones do, but not everyone does. Well, I am a downwinder. I did have colon cancer. I did collect. And packing a brain tumor, they can't get to it. No, no cancer in my blood cells, but who knows? So, and I remember playing outside here with the pink clouds and looking at, you know, your skin kind of glittered as it landed. Oh yeah. How old were you? About seven. My dad had told me about downwinders probably 15 years ago. I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer and actually had it removed. And I said, whatever, Dad, I'm fine. <laughs> and I sort of left it alone. And so now I'm here, yeah. Downwinders who can prove they were living in these areas during those times and have or are suffering from certain types of cancers may be eligible for up to $50,000 in compensation. Intermountain has hosted several public meetings informing individuals about the necessary information needed to qualify. And so if you're if your uh, mother or father had a qualifying cancer and you're not sure whether they applied or not, we can make an inquiry of the Department of Justice to ask them. And if they didn't, then you as, as siblings may qualify. 
An estimated 24,000 people have already filed and received claims since the program began. Some are hoping to file on behalf of family members before time runs out. The deadline to file a claim is July of 2022. I was actually here to learn about compensation for my father-in-law. He was here during the testing, so was my husband, and he died of bladder cancer, which is one of the covered cancers. So that's why we're pushing so hard right now to get the word out to people. Don't delay. If you have a cancer or you have a family member who had a cancer who did not apply, we want to help you through that process. And we have those services available here at the Cancer Center to help people through the process. While many people who live outside these boundaries may have also had cancer, the legislation passed in 1990 wasn't broad enough to cover all the areas that may have been stricken with radiation. Some claim the bombs released nuclear fallout reaching as far away as Idaho, Wyoming, and Montana. With the RECA program about to expire in 2022, individuals may want to contact their congressman. What you guys can do as downwinders is you can petition your congressmen and senators to um, look into this law and talk to them about passing an extension. You know, they don't pass an extension. They'd have to pass a new law to get the deadline further down. Instead of having to end in 2022, give us another 20 years because I'm 63 and by the time I hit 70, my immune system is going to be down and who knows what other cancers could creep up, not to mention the people who may not have any symptoms now might start getting it. So I think it's important that the government step up and take care of us. The Intermountain Cancer Center is also working on a study on those downwinders to find out more about the possible transfer or impacts of radiation to later generations. So oh, there, the gen genomics and, uh, center on the third floor here is putting together a study on the second generation. And if you're interested in your children being part of that, or or you, or the you um, then we just have a form. You just can put your name and number. Um, we were contacted by them to go give a very simple blood sample, fill out some paperwork, and then they'll track the effects of the radiation on the second generation and beyond. So we were really happy to participate in that and see what those effects are for those down the line. For more information on how to apply for the RECA compensation or become part of the study, contact Carolyn or Rebecca at the Radiation Exposure Compensation Program at 435-252-4760. In St. George, Melissa Anderson, Community Education News.